Hey everyone, this is Ben. Welcome back to the Midwest Model Shop. Today we are going to do the gun show. Uh, so, a couple of things I want to cover here. First off, I want to give a shout out one more time to the guys at Call for Fire. That's this picture I got over here. Really cool, great veterans group that has produced a lot of good artwork um, that's affordable and really neat. And so, I'm going to put a link in the description down below. Feel free to check out their website. You don't have to buy anything. Uh, but just, you know, give them a click so at least they get some action. I think that that would be good. If you'd like to help support a veterans agency, or not agency, but a veterans group uh, during these difficult times, all you got to do is give them a little click. Take a look around their site, see if you see anything you like. All right, so today we're going to go ahead and cover the assembly of the main batteries, the 16-inch guns on the USS Missouri. We're going to go ahead and build turret number two. Turret number two is the most complicated and difficult one to build uh, on the ship. If you get through that, the other two, they're a piece of cake. Uh, so the big thing though is gonna be order of operations. What I'm showing you is the way that I think is the best way to go about putting these things together so that you can handle the gun and not knock off any of the parts, uh, and lose all the little fiddly bits. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about some of the basic histories of the 16 inch guns. I'm going to put up some um, images of uh, the construction area, how certain guns are put together. These aren't all 16 inch gun images, but you get an idea of what I'm talking about. And of course, the gun's firing because that's cool. So the uh, 16 inch guns were all built at the Bethlehem Steel Company outside of Washington, D.C. That's where all of the major guns were assembled for the United States Navy. Uh, construction of these guns is considered a built up gun meaning they made all these subsections and put together. You had the liner, the tube, the jacket, three hops, two locking rings, a tube, a liner locking rings, a yoke ring, and then, and then uh, seven box liners, or several box liners, not sure. A bunch of those got put together. Uh, then as far as statistics on the gun, so, so first thing, these are 16 inch, 50 caliber Mark VII guns. Now originally, uh, they were supposed to have Mark II guns, I believe, which had already been production for the USS Carolina, or South Carolina, one of the Carolinas. Regardless, uh, those guns are actually bigger, and there was a design issue, and they weren't going to fit. So they had to redesign the breech, thus we have the Mark VII. These guns ended up being 66 feet long, that's 20 meters. Each individual gun ended up weighing around 239,000 pounds, that's 108 thousand kilograms. Uh, so they fired a couple of different projectiles weighing anywhere from 1,900 pounds to 2,700 pounds. Uh, that's 850 to 1,200 kilograms. And they went out the barrel at a speed of 2,690 feet per second, which is around 820 meters a second. Max range is 24 miles or 39 kilometers, uh, kilometers. So That'd be a real bummer to get hit by a car um, 24 miles away. And the cool thing about all this, I was like, well, how long would a shell be up in the air? Max range, you had a minute and 30 seconds of flight time from the time the gun fired until the projectile hit the ground. So I thought that was pretty cool. So anyway, we're going to go ahead, like I said, and launch into um, the assembly of this gun and the, the number two turret. Uh, and like I said, the order of operations is really important. You can go ahead and do it a different way, but I think that this will give you the best results. At least I, I had the most luck this way. All right, thanks for watching. Let's get started on the build. Okay, so we're starting on turret number two. Uh, you got your top and bottom piece that go together like so. Uh, the first thing you want to do is grab one of the support brackets that are going to hold up um, the entire uh, main gun assembly and you're gonna want to get it glued in place at least that's what I do and copious amounts of glue for this because it is going to be holding the guns which in real life weigh many thousands of pounds uh, but definitely are several ounces of brass so just get this glued in and get it set up um, and let it let it dry all right here we go with the uh, main top. So let's zoom in a little bit here. All right, so you have some details here. You can make out those ribs or the rivets that run along here. You've got these ribs on the back 
and you've got uh, this little detail right along here in the front. All of that needs to come off. My tool of choice is the round um, blade because you could just go ahead and slide it right along and peel all this off. So that's your first order of business. Get all of this removed. It doesn't need to be clean and pretty. It just needs to be flat on the top when you're done because we're going to put a big piece of photo etch on here. All right, there you go, all cleaned up. Now we could start, uh, if we want, we can go ahead and put the big piece of photo etch up on top here. Let's do that. Okay, here's our piece of photo etch. That's this nice piece of aluminum. You can see it's glossy in the back. Uh, there's a couple, let's see if we could show it here. Uh, thumbprints, fingerprints from my fingers. See here, sticking on. Some of you have asked about that. Don't worry about that on here. We'll deal with that later. Uh, what you wanna do though is grab your sanding stick and rough up the back side of this evenly just get some scratches in there because you want your CA glue to have something to hang on to once this is in place it's not going to come off you don't have to worry about it but this just promotes positive adhesion and security of your piece just like that's fine enough and then obviously take your top piece you could do the same thing just make sure that everything is kind of flat you don't want any extra bumps all right, a little test fitting never hurt anybody. You have these two, three prominent little bumps right here and there's holes for them on your piece. Just line those up and drop it on. And as you can see, the Pontos kit part fits extremely well into place. It's really great. So all I do uh, at this point is grab your uh, CA glue. This is medium viscosity stuff. Uh, I don't want to squish too much out around the edges. Uh, it will expand out to there and there's a bunch of holes in the um, metal piece that we're going to be utilizing later for rails that I don't want to get filled with too much glue, but that's plenty just like that. Take your piece, line it up with the holes that are on the top. Match that edge and this edge. Start from the middle and push your thumbs and work your way out. You're going to get a little bit of glue to come up on some places, but it's okay. All of this cleans up. It paints up really nice later on. And uh, this is it. This is how you get your piece down. You might have a little bit on the edge here to work down. Uh, that's not a problem. Later on, you could come back and get some more glue underneath there if you need to and it'll set up just fine. Notice that um, I did not pre-drill these holes like they tell you to in the instructions. The reason I did not do that is uh, they do and do not line up perfectly with the holes in the photo etch. I'm going to use my drill bit and run my drill through the photo etch holes just to make sure everything is in the correct position. Uh, before we come up from the bottom. Otherwise, it's just extra stuff you got to take later. Okay, that's it. Uh, this piece is in place. Now we need to move on to the kit supply guns. Okay, so here's one of the kit supply guns. Uh, what you need to do is cut the barrel off flush right here. Uh, you can do this any old way that you want. I'm going to use a uh, razor saw and just make sure that I'm flush right here and try and cut as straight across as you possibly can. You can go ahead and use a Dremel. Uh, you can try and use nippers if you've got big enough ones. I don't. I know I'm shaking the camera and everything here. This is a little, a little bit of a pinch. We'll switch it around, go like this. Uh, I try to go about halfway through and then flip it over to the other side. And same thing, start there and go down and finish the cut like so and then this is what you're left with and uh, grab a sanding stick or something you want to try and get this smoothed off and as flat as you possibly can 
just helps everything. And this is what you end up with right here. Um, obviously you'll have three of them. Now it is possible that when you do this you'll see a hole right in the middle there. That's actually fantastic, but in this example it didn't work out. Okay, after that's done you want to drill a two millimeter hole uh, right through the center as best as you can right here. Uh, I go really slow so that I don't melt the plastic. You want to try and drill the hole as straight and as centered as possible. If it's not perfect, that's okay. Uh, there'll be plenty of room later to clean this up. As you can see, um, it goes through nicely. Now, when you take your barrel and you install it, like so, uh, that's what the finished product will ultimately look like, which is great. But notice here, let's see if we can do this focused, the barrel, that brass piece protrudes through. You see that? That is a problem. You're gonna end up with your uh, rod that goes through to hold these things. If I push this down, it stops because it hits right there. You need to take uh, a file or a Dremel or something, you need to take about a 32nd of an inch off of the end of the brass barrels on all three. Uh, then just go ahead and finish drilling all your holes right here and we can assemble the next part of the gun. Okay, so now that you've got all three of your holes drilled, just go ahead and feed each of your, we'll call them the breeches, the gun breeches, onto this mounting shaft, about like so. And you're not gonna glue them. So they're held in place by friction, and it's, it's pretty taut. Okay, and then um, grab the other side. This is all friction pushed together too, it's really stiff. And go ahead and Put it together like so. You're gonna have to give it a good squeeze. And then lock this part down. There's a big groove right there where it goes into place. I wish this shaft was a little bit more robust for what we're doing, but that's okay. Uh, grab your Tamiya cement and put copious amounts of it in the bottom of this bracket right here to hold everything in place. And you're gonna let it dry. Now. We're not putting any glue on here, uh, on the shaft or where the weapons, the breeches are at. The reason we're doing all this in this order is this thing flexes quite a bit. It needs the rigidity of the bottom being installed to make everything stay where you want it. But you can't put that together until you have all the gun breeches installed inside. So. There they are, you can see that um, they're a little bit crooked, which is not really a big deal, but they're there. Uh, if you grab a toothpick, you can, whoops, can give them a wiggle, and or you could just take this part off and scoot them over a little bit the best you can to try and get them centered up in the opening as much as possible uh, until you're happy with them. And like I said, um, you could still grab them and move them back and forth. It just takes a little bit of trying uh, down the road if you need to. But they will end up pivoting just a little bit anyway when we install the guns, barrels. But that's about right. That's what we're looking for there. So once you have that installed, uh, you can go ahead and apply your Tamiya then cement around the edges and get the whole thing glued up so that you could start working on the photo etch, which is next. All right, I said we we're gonna do photo etch next, but actually uh, we gotta put these little waveguides together first. Uh, they just snap together like so. And then there's some photo etch that goes on the door opening right here. I believe these are waveguides. Um, if, if I'm wrong, someone will of course correct me, but they're part of the directional finding system uh, used to help aim the main guns at the target. And they just go together like so. Uh, the only drawback to these pieces is for some reason, uh, despite my best efforts, you end up with kind of a seam line right there. 
and one on the back here that uh, we'll just have to sand and fill in later after the fact. But you got two of these to put together and then they go on the side. I like to get them assembled um, like so before and, and cleaned up and then we'll add the photo etch and then we'll go ahead and attach them to the sides of uh, the turret and that makes it a lot easier to handle all the PE and get everything set up the way that we want. So screw together like this and then I'll sand the seams and fill it in. We'll come back for the, the little two part PE that goes right there. All right, let's see if we can do this without making too big of a mess. Uh, over here, this messy pile of everything is a bunch of super glue. Um, here's our part. So drop this glue way down in the middle here. I think this is piece 272. It's just, um, it's just a filler. I believe there's a kit uh, photo etch part that goes in here as well, but uh, I have not used it. Obviously, I'm using the Pontos and I don't really care about the kit supply part. If you use it, it's probably a similar result, but just drops in like that. There is, if you can see here in focus, um, a raised edge. Make sure you do not remove that raised edge when you are cleaning up the uh, seam along the side here. We use a little bit less glue this time, I think. Drop this piece right in here. And I'm pushing it down. I think I think it works better that way. Then you have this frame. The frame sits up on the raised edge right there. So we'll just take a little bit of CA glue and just take your piece and put it up here like that. And that's it. That's what you got. That's what you're looking for right there. And then uh, we'll do the other one and then we can just glue these onto the side of the turret. And just go ahead and grab your glue. I like to put both these on at the same time and ironically uh, this ends up being the part that I handle the most because once these are installed you're actually able to um, hold this whole turret like so and it's the only place once we're done with everything that it's safe to do so. That's it's plastic part, kit supply part, you know, right here in the end, that's what you're touching. You're not gonna drop it. And you're there's no PE installed there. And so you're gonna end up handling a lot of it uh, just like this. So we'll get those in place. Just like that. And then uh, you can see here I went ahead and drilled my little holes. Um, off camera. The next thing we want to do is cut out these four little, these are also kind of like waveguides. They go in place right there as well. Uh, we'll get those cut out and then we'll grab the photo etch for them and get that installed. All right, we're getting into smaller stuff here and I don't know if you could see right there there's a, a little flat edge. There's like a door on the side of these things and that happens to be those photo etch doors right there. Uh, off camera here I have some CA glue I'm just gonna put a dot right on that spot where it goes the hinge goes to the inside try and center it up like that and that's what you're looking to do for all of these and obviously it's a little bit tricky um, with my Bodingas fingers here and the tiny little parts that we've got but same thing just a little dab just like that and we'll wrap these up and then get them installed all right, so these go right here on the side facing forward. Just use a little bit of the Tamiya thin cement. Make sure the door goes to the front and they drop right in real nicely, actually. They fit really well. Uh, just like that, put a little bit more in just to keep it safe. But and now you can, so there's a piece of photo etch that 
We're gonna put in down here and a bunch of little detail work. Some of you, this might be in the way. So if you want, you could go ahead and install this and then put these in afterwards. But this is such a vulnerable area that I like to make sure most of my plastic work is done and out of the way before I go ahead and work on those because uh, we're really gonna quickly start to limit where it becomes okay to pick the turret up from and that plays a big role in how you're going to be able to assemble the rest of this. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, the introduction, um, the order of operations is largely going to determine whether or not you end up knocking off a bunch of pieces and losing them that you don't want to lose. All right, so now we're starting to get a turret here. Uh, so yeah, let's start working on the photo etch next. Okay, so on the back here, on the bottom of the turret, we put in these two hatches. They're pretty simple. But on turret two, on the instructions, you have this assembly right here piece 237 and that there's two of them that is something we're going to leave off right now and the reason for that is this piece ends up with very little clearance right here and it goes like that a lot until you get the uh, brass on for the turret or the barrels then the whole thing tips forward like this so I think that that piece is going to be one of the very last things that we install just so that we don't have to worry about destroying it uh, later on. But in the meantime, that's a quick, easy uh, three pieces you can go ahead and glue into place. Uh, the next thing to start doing is working on these very tiny details that go right along uh, the edge right here. And those pieces are... Right here, this part of the instructions. We're gonna be installing 215, 210, uh, 274, we'll put those on as well, and we'll start putting these in place. Uh, I just wanna say something real quick about all this. Uh, the brass photo etch pieces here that just make up the lips, those are really nice, and there's no reason not to put them on. When you get down here, these pieces, 210, 15, 27, the little angle iron pieces, and down there, the 200s. Here's the deal with those. If you don't put them on, no one will notice, and the part will still look fantastic. If you do put them on, it will look even better. However, if one of them ends up missing, you will notice it. So you, it's, it's, it's an all or nothing type of arrangement. And part 225, is exceptionally small. Let me show that to you. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Part 225 is located right there in the middle. And it is very, very small. That was my finger. Here's the tip of a, uh, a toothpick going down. It, it is right there. And that little thing, if you don't install it, you'll notice it. Obviously I've cut some out before and I've already lost some pieces already. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that part off camera just because it is so teeny tiny. Uh, basically, because <laughs> someone's gonna wanna know, well how do you do that? I just put a dab of super glue where it's supposed to go. I very carefully cut out the piece and put it there with my tweezers and hope for the best. Uh, and that's basically all you can really do. So let's show that all assembled here. All right, get some super glue. Right on here. And place like so. All right, last piece. The fit on uh, this photo etch from Pontos on the turrets is outstanding. Everything just drops right in exactly where it needs to go. Really nice. Then we have... Um, a strip that goes along here, a little detail on the front, both these we gotta go ahead and do. We'll just put a little super glue right here. Like I mentioned before, you could just leave that and be done with it, but we will go ahead and drop all those little vertical pieces in. We'll do this one two steps because there's a bend in the PE. We'll let that set up for a second, put glue under here, and then press it down. Let's 
Okay, that's in place. Uh, there's actually, before I glue these on, there's one more step you want to take. And that is to go ahead and get some of the stuff up on top installed so that we can paint this blue because you're going to end up holding it like this and maneuvering the whole thing around. And if you put your hands right here, you're going to go ahead and knock those parts off. So we want to get all of this stuff up here sorted out uh, so that we can go ahead and get it airbrushed and then we'll move on to these other parts. Okay, I'm going to try and show this next part uh, while keeping it in focus. So you have this little box that goes on top where a direction finder goes and then you've got this photo etch wall in the back here. Notice right there, there is a tiny, tiny little hole. There is also another tiny, tiny little hole right there in the bottom of this piece. And what gets suspended between the two is this brass rod. And it actually sits up off the ground. Now, I don't know if that's like a control shaft so that when the direction finder turns, uh, it turns the anti-aircraft gun on top here, or if this is just where cables go through. Regardless, uh, it goes in there. So it's I tried to figure out like how can I show this on camera But I'm just gonna have to talk through it the best thing to do because there's slack is to put it a dab of glue in there and Insert the rod into this piece first and then glue it down to the top of the gun and Then go ahead and slide it into the hole for this piece in the back uh, And then you're done just put some glue in place and you're set this thing right here ends up this piece ends up being basically just a wall. So nothing on the back side of it is exposed. Feel free to use as much glue as you want. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that up and put in place, but I just wanted to explain that because there's no good way for me to like hold the camera and move all these parts and show you how to do that. But I'll show you the finished product. All right, there it is. The whole thing's installed. Uh, there's a little bit of space right there. These little brass posts, uh, I think they're supposed to be like supports for the piece that goes on top here the gun tub, but whatever anyway uh, Next thing I'm gonna do is paint this whole thing blue um, it, it just makes it easier and then I can mask off and paint the side of this and the side of this box the gray um, Then uh, we mask off this whole thing and keep it protected and we finish up putting on I got to put the, the life rafts here and we could start putting our PE in there and all the PE in the back. So let's paint some stuff up, get it masked, we'll come back, do next part. All right, while that paint's drying, I had previously put uh, the deck blue inside of the gun tub. So we're gonna go ahead and mask this off so we could start installing the photo etch on the inside. Okay, just like shown in a previous video where I worked on the uh, gun tubs in the middle of the ship. Uh, the ammunition racks go in the same way. Once you've built one, you have not built them all. You've only built one. You got a whole bunch more to go, but there's like your three rails here. Now we actually, oh, I got to trim that. I forgot to trim this tape. There's these corner pieces that go in like this. And this is the one place on the Pondos kit, which isn't great. They don't fit right. There's only, you see underneath here, there's those supports. Well, there's a 90 degree corner here, there's just one support leg for the whole 90 degree and they don't tuck in. So it's kind of a pain to get to fit, but we'll, I'll show you what I mean here in a second. Okay, I'm gonna try and show this the best that I can. Uh, so this is one of the corner pieces and I accidentally broke the one little tab off that's there. So, but what you need to see is it goes into the corner and this edge fits pretty flush as you can see, but if I hold it just so, hopefully you can make out right along here, this, there's a gap right there. And there's a gap in the corner. Uh, it's bent too much. I'm not really sure what to do. Um, it, it's a bummer. I'll, I'll get the height right. I mean, it's no big deal. You just match up. Whoops. You match up um, this bottom one here. But it's, it's a pain if they don't have the right curve. So I may end up uh, trying to bend this photo etch a little bit to get more positive contact right here. So let me try and do that. Once I get it sorted, we'll we'll put the rest on. But that's the only issue uh, with these top tubs I've ran into is that this back corner piece has been, is really difficult to get installed and have it sit the way that uh, it should. 
Okay, so I managed to get this in there. Hopefully you can see that well enough. Uh, I had to bend the back piece of photo etch, the one on, on uh, this side, just a little bit to get it to fit snug. And it kind of made me uncomfortable, but it's in there and it's it's at the right height and everything. So uh, I just have to install the other five and then the inside of the gun tub will be done. So let's make the rest of that happen. But that was the solution was to bend that back there so that it fit up against the edge the way that we wanted. Well, there it is installed. Uh, it went okay, I guess. I mean, whatever. You gotta make the glue work and what have you. Anyway, now you have this uh, little edge right here that runs around the whole uh, tub. It's nicely molded. This next piece, I would say, is totally optional, um, but it enhances it enhances the look of things a little bit, especially once you get it all painted up. Um, I'm sure there's a much better way to do this, but I am feeling lazy right now, and so I just apply a thin layer of CA glue around this edge. Uh, we're gonna put this detail on here. If you see here though, it comes across flat and then curves down. This actually makes it a little bit tricky to um, finish, and so you, I like to have a little accelerator nearby, but we're going to grab this. Yeah, I think you guys can see that tiny little piece and center it up here in the middle as bestest as we can. At least get it around that edge. Yeah, it looks actually pretty uniform. So let's get to follow this edge right here like that. Okay, it's just a nice little uh, detail right there runs around that edge and then we're going to put um, the two on the back side here and there's this gap right there and right there and right there because the little ladders go on the outside here that you're going to need to hop up inside of the gun tub so let's get this corner pieces put on obviously this is a lot less exciting than the other part but it's a nice little additional feature And let's add a little accelerator just to lock it into place so we're not waiting all day. Okay, uh, there's a little ladder that goes right here and you can actually install it along with the ones on the sides right there uh, right now before you take this to paint. And this is uh, ready to go get painted at that point. You just shoot everything up, remove the mask, and we'll put it in place. Let's put the ladders on. Okay, here's the last one. Let's just drop it in place. Like so. It's like that part pumped up a little bit. We'll put a little glue there on this rail. It's like you, you put one piece together and you move along and you discover another little spot where something came apart. And you just spend a bunch of time correcting things. Right, there it is. Uh, ladders in place, photo etch in place for the ammo racks. That's it. And then we got our little rail around the front there, which looks nice, matches, you know, the shape of everything. Okay, so anyway, this is ready to go. All we gotta do is paint it up, uh, remove the mask, and then put it on top of the turret uh, when we're done. So, uh, Looks like we need to paint this and then mask the turret up and move on to the PE on it. Okay, we're gonna start this next step out, uh, putting on these very tiny little pieces uh, right here. Uh, remember what I said before, this looks great by itself. Yeah, it's straight up and down right there, um, this whole area. And same with on the side there, you could just leave it. If you're going to do this step though, uh, it looks fantastic when it's done. However, if you lose a piece and you know you don't do anything about it, people are going to notice it. Uh, fortunately, the photo etch is thin enough and these are just little slices. So when one goes tink, gone forever, uh, you could just cut another one. Oops, I'm in trouble with my glue. You can just cut another one with your uh, clippers out of the photo etch, you know, extra material that's around the PE. It's the same thickness, it's just a little pie slice, so you can just make one. 
There you go. There's two of them in place, like so. And these are the largest ones. Yes, the largest ones out of the entire thing that I'm gonna assemble. So they're small, and they only get smaller from there on out. So let's just go ahead and put the rest in on all the sides here uh, so we can finish that step up. There we go, uh, the little tiny pieces are installed and they look nice. So once they're painted up, they're good. So now we need to go ahead and put on the uh, life rafts right there. All right, uh, I just glopped some glue on like this. Get our life rafts up here. And I use the lines that are included right there to make sure that I've got it parallel. All right, and then we'll repeat over here, but these, on this side, this one, we're gonna actually line it up with uh, the one right next to it. I like to try to match everything up just like that. Yeah, that's it, that's all there is to it. There's your uh, two rafts and you just do the other side and then you're good to go. So real quickly, uh, I went ahead and threw the ladders on the front along with the rings that are going around the blast bags. What you need to know is that the bottom of the blast bag securing rings are thinner than the top. Put the fat part at the top and line up the bottom edge, like do something to make it flat and straight in and that's important. Okay, on the back here we have racks that get installed uh, for holding up the floater baskets and then ladders. I drew these lines because as you can see the areas that I scraped off they don't match up. What I discovered is that if you place the support brackets exactly where the lines are at on the on the old pieces that you used then the very nice little um, floater basket, the lines that support where the basket's supposed to mount, they won't match up. Now, it's not a big deal. You won't really notice it anyway, but it would be nice if they did match up. So once those are all in, uh, you can see that while not perfect, these things line up a little bit better in terms of looking like they're in the correct spot uh, like that. So that's what we're going for and then we'll just do that again right here on the other side and we'll be getting ready for paint. All right, there are the baskets installed. They look fine, everything lines up. There's a ladder that goes there but I'm gonna wait until after we install um, the anti-aircraft gun mount up here and I'm gonna paint this separately, then glue it in because obviously we have to peel the tape and everything off. Uh, and then I'll put the ladder on there and we'll paint that up. We also have that piece on the bottom there to do still. So basically we're ready to go to paint with all of this, right? We gotta take care of these two parts. Uh, if we're gonna do that though, we need to address the barrels. So uh, you get these glorious brass barrels from Pontos. And here I've already cut out one of the um, resin blast bags. So it is best to attempt to slide them on this way, but you'll see right away that it stops way short. Uh, you have to go in here and thin out a tremendous amount of the photo etch, and even then it still isn't going to work. So what I recommend that you do is get some sandpaper and very carefully sand off and smooth out this portion of the barrel, because then you can go ahead and slide this piece on and fairly easily maneuver it into a position. It ends up being right about there. Uh, I recommend that you put them on this way. Uh, be careful when you're sanding not to lose that edge. And I also recommend that you take the time to, you wanna position the depth of the blast bag. I gotta remount that hole a little bit. It's a little tight, we'll put it in the middle one. So you wanna get it in place though. That's what we're talking about. And obviously there's a gap, I gotta adjust it. But once it's in position, put CA glue here, glue it up. The reason for this is once you paint this brass, a section right here needs to remain steel. This remains black. This remains uh, the gray color. It's easier to paint this whole thing. Well, actually it's easier to put this blast bag in place, paint this steel, let it dry, mask this off because you have a nice uh, parallel edge. It's hard to get a nice straight line on that angle. And then paint the rest of this gray and you've got something to hang on to. 
So that's what you want to do. Sand this off, slide this in place, uh, get that situated. So we're going to go ahead and paint all that up next and so we can start putting this whole thing together. All right, with some of our painting done, let's see if I can pull off the tape without making a big mess of things. We're catching a little bit of that bottom one. Okay. Pulled out. Looks all right. Might do a little bit of touching up here and there, but we're okay. All right, this one's a little bit more involved and you just have to be careful um, how you hang on to it. I remember when I put this down that I had a little area here that was lifting up. We didn't get as much glue over here. So we'll just go ahead and slide a little CA glue under here, push it down, and we'll be set. So uh, I went ahead and glued this top piece on. Just note that it's gluing onto a, this is photo etch, so you need to use CA glue. Hold it down place, went ahead and put that uh, ladder back on on the back side to get ready to paint that. So there's a tremendous amount of detail in terms of railings that go around here and they're going to be, that's where all those little holes are, uh, it's going to be super duper fragile. So what we want to do next is kind of wrap up some of this stuff before we attach the barrels that are drying because once the barrels are attached, which requires the most handling, uh, it should be a lot easier to go around and add this last fragile details. There are straps that go and hold down the, uh, well, they're supposed to hold down the life rafts here. So what we're going to do is just put a dot of CA glue here and here, and one down in the corner, like so. These do kind of have a direction. There are long and short arms, and put the short arms at the top, like that. Uh, try and center up. If you try and center up those little rings, like I, you see I did there, and just let it settle, you'll be alright. So see how I bent that and there's a little crease right there? I want that bend right at kind of the top of the life raft. Can't do a whole lot about the bottom. Alright, that's probably about as good as it's going to get. Next to it, we could go ahead and set it up as well. Like that, to get it to match up, um, you know center to center like that. And you'll want to do this on the other side as well, obviously. But just leave it like this and let them, let it set up. You want that glue to dry. So now, all you gotta do is put a little piece of glue right along that top there. And if you need to trim it, you can, but uh, we'll get that tidied up. This one right here, trimming just a little bit of the excess off right there. Probably cut it right about there so it touches where we want and then we'll be ready to paint those up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, now we have, so the, I finished painting all this up like the rough stuff, right? Here's your three colors. I painted this area right here steel and just got our basic flat black on the blast bags. So uh, now for the fun part, or the terrifying part, whatever your personal preference is, it's fine with me. Uh, we gotta go ahead and install these, like so. And obviously the trick is, we want them to have the same angle, uh, and we want them to all be parallel, and we want them to all look uh, magically perfect. Or you don't have to, if that's not your preference. Um, so, the obviously the positive attachment point is going to be, once I get my glue to work this morning, uh, right inside here, but as you recall earlier, these pivot. They still pivot. So you're going to be relying on the resin blast bags to, um, let's in focus, keep everything in place. So I like to put a little bit of glue, kind of thick, around these edges here. And we'll have to speed all this up at some point, but the first barrel determines everything, right? Once it's in, that's it. You, you, the other three have to follow suit. So 
Man, I hope you guys could see this. It zoomed in kind of close. Try and get it as parallel or perpendicular to the front as you possibly can. And I'm just looking at it because you have a few moments to adjust it, obviously. And really, you could probably pull this off if you needed to, but you're, I mean, generally speaking, you're, you're pretty... You're pretty committed at this point. So that one looks good, actually. Um, notice I'm moving around. I keep my fingers all in strategic locations. And this is why I have not inserted all of the railings around here yet. Uh, also, we set this down. Notice how perfectly it sits up. If you recall before the shot, it was doing this. We add a few more ounces of barrels, uh, or in real life, another 226,000 pounds or something like that a piece. The thing's gonna tip forward on me. Um, that's just the the way that it is. So I'm pretty happy with that. So let's now. Maybe that was the fun part, and this is the nerve-wracking part. I don't know. I'll add some more CA. And the thing I like about CA and this whole little arrangement, look, it dries clear. It's a little glossy, but you can go back through and touch any of this up with um, the kit color paint and it is going to disappear on you. You're not gonna see it. Okay, so this one's gonna require some more effort here. So obviously, you know, you want them the same height and you want them parallel. I'm thinking I might get this one to glue in in the right spot. Obviously the main turret, but um, it's gonna require a bunch more glue to get it to stay in place. Now, we're starting to get parallel here. I don't like that twist. Let's check our angle. It's low. And you're just gonna have to do the best you possibly can. Yeah, oh, okay, so here we go. This spot right there is our point of positive contact. Not really hitting, uh-oh, I just dumped, bumped a ladder off. That's okay, we'll fix that. Not really hitting anywhere else. And I have some glue there, which is good. So that's my other tip. Figure out where the blast bag is making contact with the edge of the um, blast bag securing ring mount, I guess we'll call it, you know, AKA the front of the turret here. And make sure there's glue there. We can go back in after the fact and add glue to reinforce and support this thing, and we absolutely will. But you need it to be touching somewhere in the first place to get it at least halfway right. How's that look to you guys? So far, so good. I feel like, let's see here. It's up just the tiniest hair, but I think that'll be, I think that'll be okay. All right. Um, so the ladder popping off, I the camera's in front of me and then I'm reaching way forward here to the uh, work area. You wanna make sure that you are over something like this so that when your little parts fall off, uh, when you're videotaping this for your YouTube video, that they fall right down onto your work table right in front of you so that you don't have any trouble finding the piece. And you, any of you who've done this before or worked with the P know that unfortunately the ladders get bumped quite a bit and they may need to be reapplied several times. Okay. I'm holding the turret up like this a lot. One, it helps me make sure that these are as parallel as I can get them. Two, the weight of the turret is down, obviously, with gravity. So I don't have to worry about it falling all over creation. And it allows me to make some slight modifications to it. All right, so you look carefully. See the center barrel, the one that's just brass tipped? It's slightly higher. Can you see how they're not dead nuts perfect right there? That's irritating. But I'm pretty committed, I think, at this point. Now, if we look at them straight on, it's really close. You can tell it's really close. So I'm okay with this because at a casual glance, they're pretty parallel. This one is going that way a little bit. I don't know if we can sneak a little bit out of this one. Yeah, there we go. We got a tiny, tiny bit out of it. Um, they're pretty parallel. So we have a gap right here, tiny gap there. Uh, there's a gap on the inside right there. So all those gaps, I'm gonna go back in with my medium CA glue and fill them in. The reason is I want uh, to make sure that there's absolutely no reason down the road that these things are gonna tip over. 
These barrels weigh way more than all of this plastic put together, and I gotta fix my, uh, my little ladder that popped off. Uh, but see now, clunk, they tip right down. Now this is something else you could do too. Uh, it will tip forward evenly, and the barrels will rest evenly. But actually I could see right here the middle one, there we go, I was commenting earlier, see how there's just that tiniest little gap right there so you know I'm, I'm doing the best that I can and and everyone here you are just gonna do the best you can too when you put these together so I'm gonna add a little bit of CA glue and then we're gonna um, do some little painting and we're gonna talk about that too so let's that's coming up next alright so uh, touching up paint here I wanted to show you guys real quickly let's see zoomed in here uh, that brass ring is like uh, the retaining ring. It's a nice piece by Ponto. So I put it on the other two. Um, I'm going to paint it black. And then uh, we're going to talk about doing highlights. But I just wanted to show you that is there. I, I wanted to paint it the gray uh, that you see here because I thought it would stand out nice and look good. Uh, but pictures I saw, there is something, something was clearly painted. This was clearly painted black and then behind it there was like a lighter color ring. But... It's such a difficult detail to uh, cover that I figured well, let's just plain it back black and leave it. But I'm going to touch that up real quick and then we're going to come back and talk about uh, what we're going to do with the rest of this for painting. Alright, we've got our black paint uh, touched up on here and put in place. All I'm using is this Model Master acrylic flat black uh, and I also have acrylic flat white. I bought these because I know that enamel paint is going away and I'm going to have to switch to acrylic at some point. So I started experimenting with these. So far so good. Uh, they brush on well and they are brushed pretty well. Not a big deal. But what I want to talk about now is uh, so the blast bags are just painted this flat black and as you can see if I turn it here you've got some nice little wrinkles and everything. Some highlighted areas from the blast bags that look good. Now uh, naturally they look great you catch them in the light and and you're all set and you're good to go I want to highlight them the reason is in certain lighting conditions you'll just lose the dynamic of what's going on there and it's a little bit frustrating uh, so what I'm gonna do is mix up just a slightly teeny tiny lighter color black I mean, we're talking about making a super minor adjustment to the tint of this black. I'm actually going to grab a little bit more black paint and swirl it together. It's way too much white. There we go. Now we're getting there. And I'm just going to leave the brush wet. And we're talking, this is just a, a, a very, very little bit. And hopefully, this shows up in the camera. But what I'm going to do is just take that little mix up there and just touch some of these high areas with it but what's going to happen is when the paint dries there'll be just the tiniest variation i don't know if you could start to see it right now see how it's starting to especially in that middle one where it's drying up you just it just brings out the the raised areas just the the most a little bit and that is all you are trying to do all right so we'll let that set up and then we have to start putting on the microscopic little railing that go into place so let's set up for that all right I'm gonna sh try to show this we have on the instructions here all of these railing bits that need to go into place I'm gonna start with number 254 these little handrails they are on the inside of the turret top and then these other rails 247 go just to the outside edge of them so we're gonna put those in first they are extremely small uh, some extra ones are provided it's those little hand pieces right there. And just so everyone can have perspective, pick out your currency of choice. That's how teeny, teeny, tiny they are. So there are fortunately some extra ones. Um, what the plan is is to cut one of these out very carefully. And I have my CA glue standing by on the side. And we're going to very carefully pick this up you guys probably can't even see that with tweezers get it going oriented um, the correct way you can make out the glint there that's it there are little holes that show where this goes they are holes that are mounted in the uh, top of the bracket that one actually is it different here yeah we're gonna put this one here I think that back one is actually a different size piece 
So it goes like that. There you go. You make out that little brass piece. So I need to put those in all the way around. So let me go ahead and do that and then I'll show you what it looks like. Then very carefully we will paint it and hopefully uh, not need to touch this area again. All right, that's the railing installed. Uh, I'll try and just do a quick little careful spin here. Fingers out of the way. Uh, my hopes, my dreams, my goals and wishes are that it stays in place for forever. I don't know if that's gonna happen. Um, I'm gonna let the glue definitely set up and then I'm going to very carefully hit it with the deck blue uh, with a brush and I'm hoping that a little bit of the extra paint will go down into the areas where uh, it secures to the top and actually help hold it into position. But that really is the last major hurdle uh, that we're dealing with. Uh, then we have to put the little piece on the photo etch piece on the back that we made earlier. We gotta throw our gun on the top, give the whole thing a wash, and we'll be ready to wrap this up. So let's go ahead and do those things. All right, the railings are painted up. Hopefully you can make it out there. Might need to do a little touch up. Of course the furnace turned on as soon as I started this, but uh, you can make those out. So I wanted to share this next part. I've got a round uh, blade here. I saw this uh, in a picture of the ship. On, in one of my books. Uh, if you can see right here, these raised bolts that are on top of the turret had worn completely off. Um, clearly the deck, you know, the blue was still there. But uh, this is wear and tear from the ocean. This is wear and tear from people walking around. And because the photo etch underneath is aluminum, you don't have to worry about coming through gold, which is absolutely fantastic. And you can go ahead and get this nice little worn effect. Real subtle, just scraping the paint off. You can make some more prominent than others if you want to really get the paint off, but that's it. It's just that nice little wear and tear. It's realistic. We'll add some other little dots and things like that. Uh, now we need to put uh, like a black wash on the whole thing and we need to get our uh, little part on the bottom here installed. Let's see if we can't transition to that. Alright, I got the turret flipped over upside down. We're ready to install these pieces right here. Uh, they're just 90 degree folds, but I do want to point out here that I pre-painted just kind of roughly the uh, bottom because once these are installed, it's gonna be a little bit tricky to get in there and get paint on the bottom of them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dip them in super glue. There's little marking positions where these go in the metal. And that's it. Just drop it into place like that. All right, got glue on the other one. Just line it up in the spots, and that's it. It's in position. Okay, here we've got our turret pretty much all assembled. Um, we gotta grab this gun director and put it in place. Just a little CA glue. Now the whole thing requires um, a wash. Uh, we'll use Vallejo black for this, and then um, up on top here, let's put some super glue. You're supposed to put your in an aircraft gun, you just kind of got to mind where the hole is and put a little CA glue down. Grab this guy and do the best you can to center it up. Make sure it's pointing straight, matching the uh, an aircraft gun. And there you go. It needs a wash. Uh, I'll do that with some Vallejo. Uh, real quickly here, I numbered this um, gun number 19 right here. The reason I did this is it's number 19 on the Pontos instructions, and uh, the other spots on the instructions, or I'm sorry, in the, my photo references where these were numbered, uh, I think they were like 9 and 11 or whatever, those positions in my reference photo matched the position of the numbering in Pontos. So I'm using that solely as my reference for uh, numbering that. I, I could be totally wrong and you guys can feel free to comment 
uh, in the comments and tell me I am and that's okay. But uh, yeah, this is it. When you're done, uh, you're all set. This is what the gun looks like. Uh, and this is the hardest one to do. This is turret number two. Uh, if you spend a little bit of extra time, you'll end up with this. This is turret number one and turret number three. And as you can see, this is what I was talking about. Um, I just did a little bit of the highlighting and see how that just pops up so nicely on uh, the um, blast bags right there. It just adds just this little bit to the whole thing. So anyway, those are the turrets. Uh, this is the gun show. Obviously, it would be really cool to see these, I think, on the ship. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give this thing a quick... Uh, wash with the Vallejo to match those and then uh, we'll stage them on the ship and show you everything we've done so far. Okay, here we go. Here's the whole ship in the shot, uh, what we've got done so far. We'll come on in here, make a slow pass so that you can see all of the detail thus far. I think the guns really look great obviously they add a lot to what's going on you can see some of the stuff down there in the back there's all of our five inch guns that we did in the last video that's one of the other uh, <laughs> I just threw it up there one of the bofers that uh, we made from the kit during our demo video, here's the antenna on the rear stack, the after radar, all the other gun directors. Here's turret number three, and all the other stuff in the back here. All right, let's go ahead and pivot around to the other side so you can see that. Here we go on the starboard side. Looking pretty cool, I think. And yeah, it's it's a big ship. This is where I sit and work. You guys are familiar with all of that. And uh, come all the way back here and get into the shot. Alright, that's it for now. Thank you all very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode and you're all doing well and staying safe out there. Uh, we'll get back to you next time.